I'm Allendale's Chief Meteorologist Ryan Martin with a look at your midday weather update. As we take a look at action during the uh, midday hours here, high pressure is generally in control over a good chunk of the Corn Belt. Oddly enough, though, the high is nowhere near the Corn Belt. It's sitting up over northern parts of Ontario, just getting ready to pass by to the south of Hudson Bay. But you cannot argue with the air mass that it controls, digging this cool air all the way down to the Red River Valley, Oklahoma, Texas, then across into the mid-Mississippi River Valley. We're starting to see a little bit of cloud cover come in over the Canadian prairies, specifically Manitoba, eastern Saskatchewan, western Ontario. This is ahead of a weak low that will move in. Probably does enough to trigger a few scattered showers in the upper Midwest, northern plains, but most of this action is going to be in Canada going forward. Still looking at a mostly dry finish to the week and the weekend. And you know what? Most of next week, or at least the early half of next week, as well over the Corn Belt. Where things get interesting will be in the extreme eastern Corn Belt. We're still not big believers in Hurricane Joaquim pushing moisture back into the eastern Corn Belt, but it probably does bring some clouds in. I still think the Appalachian Mountain chain is going to be a fairly significant barrier, but the latest model consensus has this storm coming and probably making landfall anywhere from the outer banks of North Carolina, so northeastern parts of North Carolina, all the way up to the Delmarva Peninsula. So somewhere in there, that means Washington, D.C. would be in play. So mid-Atlantic states is where this thing's probably headed. The current tracks and, and forecast also says it has a more northerly push than east. So that also would argue against getting a lot of moisture to push across the Appalachians and into places like Ohio and Indiana. But still, uh, we're probably going to be hearing this brought up. I don't think the threat is large, but we will watch it. Uh, we will probably see at least some clouds in the eastern Corn Belt starting late Sunday and then going on through Monday. The next front that hits the entirety of the Corn Belt comes next week, and we're having to push it back because, if anything, uh, this hurricane coming up and hitting the mid-Atlantic states basically just puts the brakes on the entire flow pattern across the country. So if we've got nice weather for the weekend and early next week, it's probably going to linger a day or two longer. The next front doesn't come through till Wednesday, Thursday. It still has a quarter to maybe half, three-quarter inch rainfall totals with it. Coverage about 75% of the Corn Belt. We've got another system then. It looks like it's in line to come in around the 14th, 15th that could have half an inch or better rainfall totals. But generally speaking, this hurricane is going to be the game changer. Where it goes, how it moves, and its strength all have to come into play. Strength-wise, I think we're probably looking at a Cat 2, maybe low Cat 3 before she finally comes ashore. So we'll be watching that very, very closely. What about international weather? want to touch on that a little bit. Uh, latest look at the models in the Black Sea area showing basically no threat of rain over the course of the next uh, 7 to 10 days. We had been seeing some pretty good moisture trying to fire off over the Black Sea itself. That's dissipated here. We don't have any good fronts in. As a matter of fact, a dominating high-pressure dome sits just to the north of the Ukraine. And, and that's probably going to keep most of the Black Sea region dry here through the next 10 days. Also looking at some dry weather in Australia. High pressure sitting off the southern coast hasn't moved there. One thing we did see earlier today, a few little little batches of showers trying to sneak in probably over the next five to six days over extreme western parts of western Australia. I don't think it's enough to get too excited about for weed on the whole. As a matter of fact, I'm still talking dryness there. Uh, but it's not like we don't have a few attempts trying to come together. In South America, the bean areas that are wanting to plant right now, Mato Grosso, not seeing much rain. Limited to scattered showers over the course of the next, oh, I'd say probably 10 days to two weeks. However, go a little bit farther south into some of these southern bean areas, Mato Grosso de Sol, through Paraná, Sao Paulo, down into Rio Grande de Sol. Especially, I saw a, a little bit of a blurb this morning from somebody in Mato Grosso de Sol. Uh, they're not getting... Anything done for a while with strong low pressure circulating over Paraguay and into Mato Grosso de Sul. So there's rain to the south, but we're going to continue to hear the dryness stories coming out of Mato Grosso itself as being the dominant uh, headlines there. That's what we've got in the midday forecast update. No real significant changes here on the whole. Decent weather in the U.S. for harvest. Just keep an eye on that hurricane. If you've got any questions on the weather, give us a call at Allendale. I'm Chief Meteorologist Ryan Martin.